Hi, I'm Jennifer Ferguson with Artistic Painting Studio, and I'm just here today to um, give you some really good information about foils and actually doing a foil finish and what it takes to transfer foils. So I'm going to start with what foils are really about and what they are. Um, they're actually a metalization that is on the back of uh, cellophane type material, uh, like clear plastic. And to release or transfer that metalization, uh, you have to have a surface that is tacky enough to transfer it um, or to get it to release off of the, um, the cellophane. So in the beginning, when we start with any kind of a foil finish, you need to have a foil adhesive and one that's going to dry to a really firm tack and that is going to be tacky enough that it will do the transfer for you. Um, I actually have a product that I've created uh, that's called just APS Foil Adhesive, and it works wonderful. I've had great reviews from everybody that's used it. Um, it is a one coat application. Uh, very, very seldom do I ever have to put two coats on, and believe me, I, I ask for you to test it on something first before you put two coats on and make sure it doesn't just pull the entire wall off. Um, so it is just a, um, a liquid product. Um, it looks milky white and I'm going to show you uh, how to actually apply it to the surface and so let me get started here. I'm just going to use a um, foam roller for my demo right now. You can also use a um, low nap um, like mini little weenie rollers work good also, but make sure they're really low now. You want to put on as smooth um, of a layer as possible. You don't want to create a lot of texture when you're actually um, putting on the foil adhesive uh, because that texture can actually telegraph into the finish. So for the smoothest finish possible, um, the really, really dense foam rollers work the best. So you can see as it goes on, kind of white and milky, but it will dry out completely clear. Um, so I'm just going to roll this on the complete surface and get my sample board ready for the technique that I'm going to show you. And you want to make sure that you have 100% coverage and that you do have good coverage. Um, no adhesive, no tack, no transfer. So you don't want to have it dripping off your wall, but you definitely want to make sure that you have 100% coverage and good coverage. Um, because I am using just the foam roller right now for this demonstration, um, I am making sure that I'm putting it on what I would consider to be a generous um, layer just because a lot of times I like to actually use the, the Rooster Low Nap Roller, which definitely puts on a little bit heavier coverage um, than a foam roller will actually accomplish for you. So once you have your coverage, you have 100% coverage, you now need to allow the foil adhesive to dry to what's called a firm tack. Now, depending on where you live, um, this could be within 15 minutes or it could be 45 minutes to an hour. Um, the higher the humidity in your area, the longer it will take for it to dry and tack um, to that firm, firm tack. And you don't want to start before it's dried to that firm tack. So if you are in a humid area, um, you might, or just because there's you know a lot of rain or whatever, just make sure that you are um, maybe going a little bit longer um, than you know, necessary, maybe let it dry an hour or two. Um, it doesn't matter how long it dries, you just have to make sure it does dry to a firm tack before you go forward. Um, I can roll this surface and leave this for days. It will never dry beyond a firm tack. So in the end of my project, no matter what I'm doing, um, if it's just a foil transfer or if I'm doing a foil with a stencil or with plasters or something else, um, for my final coat, I need to either put some kind of top coat over the top of it 
to protect it as well as seal back any of that tack that still could be showing. Um, or I can also put a glaze over it. The glaze also seems to seal everything back. Uh, so I'm going to move out this particular sample board that I just prepared and allow that one to dry to a firm tack. And we'll get the one that I did earlier today. And actually, it's this tape is all wet, so let me remove this tape so I don't have wet adhesive here. Now I can put up my sample board. Okay, so I prepped this sample board a little while ago, and it is what I call a firm tack. I don't know if you can hear that, but it's tacky but firm, okay? It's not a wet tack anymore. Um, I've actually started off with a black board. This is just a satin, um, high-quality black paint. And the finish that I'm going to show you guys um, is all working in silvers. So I will be working in, um, this is the collection of colors. I know they don't look too much different, but they're all slightly different um, hues of silver. So I have silver, um, pewter, and I believe titanium are the three that I'm using. And um, I'm starting with the silver first. And just going to go ahead and roll off a couple feet. And you can cut this to any length you need. The foils come in um, several different size rolls. Um, this is a one foot roll, and my one foot wide rolls can come in, I've got I think a dozen or so different colors that are only on a 25 foot roll, and then all of the colors are available in a one foot wide by 100 foot roll, as well as when you get into your bigger projects and you're doing some walls, uh, we have a two foot wide roll which can get up to 200 linear feet on here. So that's a lot of foil for your um, your bigger projects. Uh, but for right now I'm just going to go ahead and cut a couple of pieces and this is the silver HS oh, the end of the roll. Okay so we have the bright and shiny side and this is the side of the foil that is actually the cellophane. So this is what I call uh, the side that needs to be facing you. I would say the pretty side or the bright side should always be facing you. The back side that is a little bit more matte and finish, um, this is actually the metallization that's going to transfer. Uh, there are many ways to um, apply your foils, but for today's project, I'm actually gonna take my foil, I'm gonna wad it up and just sprinkle it I'm going to make sure, okay, all that noise, sorry. I'm going to make sure that only the back side is showing. And I'm going to pounce this onto the surface. Uh, this creates a very unique, like non directional, um, just lots of beautiful, pretty movement. And as you start to transfer um, that foil, the metallization is going to come off the cellophane. So I'm going to reposition to another section and continue across my board. Also, when I'm doing this, in case the foil is going to create any kind of a pattern. I try not to do um, motion where I'm going straight in a row like that, so I would consider that I would create a pattern that could be, you know, horizontal or vertical, but to kind of move your hand around into different positions so that if there is any patterning that's coming out, it's more random. Okay, sorry about the noise. The foils are noisy. So that's the first color that I'm going to transfer. And then I've already pre-cut my other two colors. And again, that 
shiny side is the cellophane. You never want that towards your surface. Uh, I'm going to crinkle this also, and then again, pass. And now, with the secondary color and the third color, um, it's only going to transfer a little bit randomly where you still have some of the adhesive that is exposed and tacky enough to pull the metallization off. just what I call a basic backfill and try to just get as much coverage as possible. Sorry that I'm not talking much during this, but these foils are noisy when you're doing this. <laughs> showing and that's part of the finish that I've created with just a slight variation of color so it doesn't have strong color change but just a very slight variation. Um, this is a wonderful background for um, a stencil. Uh, it could be a background for a, another layer of maybe a plaster technique or some of this is just peeking through. Um, but it's also great just as it is. So um, at this point, if I put my hand on here, I can still fill some tap that's definitely exposed. Um, and so I can either go back to the silver and try to fill in more of it, or just let it be as it is. Once you have transferred your foil, you can go to the next layer because there's nothing else to have to dry or have to wait for. So at this point, oh, let's see that I left something open here close this up. Um, I'm going to apply uh, a coat of what's called final coat and this just happens to be one of my favorite um, top coats and it's a wipe on varnish. So I just keep my microfiber pads in a baggie. I normally leave them in the refrigerator or the freezer and just tip over the bottle a couple times just so you're getting some fresh product in here. And all I'm going to do is just wipe that onto the surface. This product is applied um, paper thin and dries really quick. So within about five to ten minutes that layer is probably going to be dry enough that I could put another layer on. Um, the other things that you want to watch for when working with the foils is they are a very high shiny reflective surface. So to keep that surface, you want to make sure that you are top coating with nothing less than satin. Most of the time I'm in a semi-gloss or a gloss um, top coat to preserve that sheen. Um, or if I want to knock it down a little bit, which you know, sometimes it's not a bad thing either, that you know, they can be almost too shiny is to go ahead and bring the sheen of your top coat or your glaze down a little bit so that you can basically just kind of soften the reflectiveness. And I am going to um, go to the back side of this camera really quick and pull in for a close-up so I make sure that you can see this really well. So here we are 
close-up of the final finish. I hope you have enjoyed watching and that I have given you some great information. Um, probably will follow this up with a blog post, so make sure to check out artisticpaintingstudio.com or my blog site at Studio J. Renee. Thanks for joining me.